Hello everyone and welcome to Learn with Mrs. Knackley. Today I'm going to read you the true story of Mao's Last Dancer. This is the simpler version of the book. Um, it's called The Peasant Prince. And it's by Li Kanjin and Anne Spudbillers. I hope you enjoy it. The Peasant Prince Some time ago, in a remote village in northern China, a small peasant boy lived with his parents and six brothers in a tiny brick house. They were very poor. On the bleak farming lands around his village, the boy would often fly a homemade kite. It was a gift from his beloved father. That small boy was me, and my story begins with that kite. On one bitterly cold day near our home in Quindal, I tied some paper wishes to my kite and my father helped me fly it up into the sky. The kite soared like a bird and my hopes and wishes went with it. Then he sat down beside me as he always did and told me a story. I loved all his stories but my favourite one was this. Once upon a time, a little frog lived in a deep, dark well. It was his only home. One day, he met a frog from the world above. Come down and play with me, begged the frog in the well. The frog from the other world above laughed. My world up here is much bigger. The frog in the well was very annoyed, so he told his father what he'd heard. My son, his father said with a sad heart, I have heard there is a bigger and better world up there, but our life is here, in the well. There is no way we can get out. I want to see what it is what it is out there, cried the little frog. But even though he jumped and hopped, the well was just too deep. It is no use, my son, said his father. I have tried all my life to get out. Still, the little frog kept on trying to escape from that deep, dark well. Long after my father had finished his tale, I kept thinking about that sad little frog in the well. Back at our house, I would help my mother cook. It was our special time together. When we all sat down to eat, we would stare longingly at what little food there was. Every night, our mother would pray that none of her sons would die from starvation. I was always hungry. At night, we slept head to toe, crammed on a hard, dirt-made bed. I hated my brother's feet in my face. Still, I would dream about my kite and the little frog in the world. But my brothers and I were luckier than some, of, some in our village. We survived. At the age of nine, we started school. In winter, it was a long, cold walk to our simple schoolroom of mud and straw. The icy winds blew snow through our clothes, chilling deep into our bones. One very cold day, four strange officials came into our classroom. They wanted to take some children to study something called ballet. Only one girl was chosen. Then, just as they were about to leave, 
teacher song suddenly pointed at me. What about this one? She said. The girl and I were measured and tested. My legs were lifted high. My body was stretched, but I did not cry out in pain. I thought again of the little frog in the well. Perhaps if I could pass this test, I could help my family live a better life. For many weeks I waited. Then, no one could believe the news. Li Zhangjing, a poor peasant boy, had been chosen from the millions of children in the whole of China. I was to leave home and become a dancer. Mother, I said, can you come with me? My dear son, she replied. This is your one chance to escape this cruel world. You have your secret dreams. Follow them. Make them come true. I could feel my mother's love as she held me tight in her arms. And so I waved goodbye to the only home I had ever known. I was just 11 years old. I was taken away on a crowded train. Such strange sights and sounds at the enormous Beijing station. I was lost in this vast, teeming city, and all I felt was fear. Before I knew it, my new life had begun. I was plunged into my first days at the Beijing Dance Academy. They were long and hard and bewildering. I was one of the worst students and I felt so shy, lost in an ocean of loneliness. I missed my mother and every night I sobbed myself to sleep. Sometimes, I would find a place to hide amongst the weeping willows. The dripping leaves quivered as my tears fell, as if the trees themselves understood my sadness. Two years went by before I found a friend. He was called the Bandit, and we helped each other through. And later, I met Teacher Zhao, Teacher Zhao showed me the most beautiful leaves, graceful as a peasant, powerful as a dragon. Nothing is impossible, he urged, and he told me the story of the bow shooter, who had to practice over and over if he wanted to become the best in all of China. I loved the stories Teacher Zhao told me. They were stories of courage, hope and great achievement. So I too began to practice night after night, turning and turning by the light of a single dim candle. I practiced for years in those ballet studios. By the time I was 18, Teacher Zhao told me I had become one of the best dancers in China. I wished so much that my parents could come and see me, but how would that ever be possible when they were so poor? Then one day, a famous ballet master came to visit our academy. His name was Ben, and he asked me if I would like to study ballet in his country, America. I thought again of the little frog and said yes. Soon I found myself on a plane, travelling halfway across the world. Now I was even further from my family. I landed in a foreign city of huge highways and enormous buildings. I could not believe what I was seeing. It was not a bit like China. In America, I worked hard on my ballet, and by the time I was 21, I was traveling all over the world 
and dancing in great cities like London, Paris and Moscow. I had become a star. But every day I remembered my mother and father and how lonely life was without them. It had been many long years since we'd been separated and something was always missing in my heart. Then, one day, a wonderful thing happened. I learned that my parents could come from China to see me dance. Could it be true that after all this time, I was to see them once more? It was the grand opening of Nutcracker. In the dressing room, I looked at my parents' precious photograph, as I always did. Soon, I would see their faces, really see them, not just in a photo. My hands were trembling, my heart was beating fast. At last, it was time to dance, and I leapt onto the stage. Suddenly, through a beam of light, I saw them. My dear mother and father sitting in the audience, I saw their beautiful faces, I saw their sparkling eyes, and I saw their smiles, so big and proud. Our son, you did it, I could almost hear them say. You followed your dreams and you made your wishes come true. Yes, I thought, it is true, I did it. And now, we are together again at last. That night, that the night I will never forget, my heart soared with happiness and I danced the dance of my life. And so the little frog did get out of the well, but he never forgot where he came from. Even after all those years, the young man who had become a dancer would always remember that small boy flying his kite on a bitterly cold day in a faraway place called Kingdale. About Lee's China. When this story began in the 1960s, China's leader was a man called Mao. Zedong. He was chairman of the Communist Party, which organised China in a very strict way, so that everything people had, their houses, their furniture, their clothes, their animals, belonged to the government. The government made all the decisions about how people lived, what they did and what they could own. But during this time, many villagers, like Li, did not have enough food. They were very poor because the government's ideas about how to run the country were not working. Millions of people were dying of starvation. When children were lucky enough to go to school, they had to learn all about Chairman Mao and show support for him in everything they did. China was a very difficult country to visit then, or to leave if you lived there. That is why it was so wonderful for Li's parents to be allowed out of China to see Li dance. And that is why it was so wonderful for Li to go to America a country that most Chinese people at, at that time were not allowed to visit or even speak about. Today, China is a very different place. You can visit exciting places like Beijing where Li studied ballet or the Great Wall of China. Li's parents still live in Qingdao but now Li and his family can visit them every year. Perhaps one day you will visit China too and remember Li and his family and how one thin thread of a chance changed all of their lives.
I hope you enjoyed this story. If you did, please give it a like, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for joining me on Learn with Mrs Knackley. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.